Okay, there we go. Now without music. Sorry, the music may be just be too complicated for me to deal with. Uh, so anybody, hi. Anyway, hi everybody. Without music this time. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, hope everyone had a great uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, aside from a brief hailstorm here in Dallas, we have had delightful weather, which has been very nice. It's beautiful and sunshiny today. And I'm excited to be with y'all for this evening's tutorial, which is our Boho Knotted Lariat. Now, um, this is a really fun technique because it allows you to really explore the, um, the texture of your cording um, and really incorporate that as part of your design as opposed to, you know, when you're knotting, when you're just traditional knotting, you see your knot. You see your cording, you see the color of it and everything, but it's 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 more of an adjunct to the design when you're when you're traditional knotting, the beads are really kind of more of the focus. 
but when you're doing this style of knotting, the cord really comes into play as part of the design, which can be really fun. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. All right, you are going to need, oops, there's no header there. I'm just not doing well at all with the um, technology today. There we go. So you're gonna need two cards of Griffin silk bead cord. And what size you use is totally going to depend on what size of beads that you use. Um, I'm going to be using these citrine beads tonight, and so my size 5 should be good. Basically, you just need one of your cords to be able to pass easily through your beads. The cool thing about this also is... Sorry. It's a great project... If you have irregular sized bead holes because you're not, since you have one cord going around the outside of the bead um, and only one cord going through the bead, you're not holding it no matter what the size of your cord is. So any of you who are somewhat experienced, um, sorry this necklace is just really tight. Those of you who are um, experienced knotters out there probably are familiar with the frustration that can ensue when you have beads with different sized holes that you're trying to knot. Because the cord that you're using needs to go through the hole of the bead, but still needs to be able to make a knot that's big enough that the bead doesn't fall over the knot. And so when you're doing this type of knotting where you've got two cords, and one goes around the outside of the bead, you totally kick that problem, you know, off of the island. Like, that's not even a consideration when you're doing this kind of knotting, which is really, excuse me, sorry, really kind of nice to not have to worry about that. So, um, I've chosen size 5 silk for my project tonight, but you really could use almost any size. Um, I'm going to be making a smaller version. So the um, one that I made for the sample was two strands long, so it was about 36 inches total. Um, just because of the time constraints of being on stream, I'm going to be making a shorter lariat tonight, so I'm going to be using one strand of beads that is 16 inches long. You can basically extend this project out um, with your Griffin silk up to two strands of beads. So 32 inches of beads makes about a 36 inch long lariat. If you want longer than that, unfortunately, these babies aren't going to cut it for you because these are pre-measured at a two meter length. And so with the knotting, there's only so much length that you can knot with these. So you're going to max out with your Griffin silks at about 36 inches. If you want to do something longer than 36 inches, Sorry, now I have these stream yawns. <clears throat> Possibly I should drink the caffeine instead of the champagne. Ah. Anyway, um, if you want to do something longer than 36 inches, you have options, but um, the Griffin Silk is, n is not one of them. You have to use spool silk or some other cord that comes on a spool like tough cord. Um, tough cord string silk on any of these um, or spool silk will work. So again, for tonight's project I'm using two number five Griffin silk. I've got one strand of citrine beads. I've got two accent beads. I'm going to use these two gigantic gold colored pearls. As far as findings go, I'm going to need a pair of head pins. I'm going to need a pair of bead tips. This is a bead tip right here that's going to be the beginning and the end of the knotted portion of my lariat and then as far as tools go I need my <laughs> basic tools so I need my wire cutters I need my round nose pliers chain nose pliers, and, wow, really? 
And I'm also going to need a knotting tweezers. I'm going to need some hypo cement. And I'm going to need a sharp scissors or I'm probably just going to slum it with my wire cutters because that's what I tend to do because it's easier to just have the one tool. Okay, so I'm going to start by unwrapping my Griffin Silk. So here's the thing um, with Griffin Silk is it's actually really easy to unwrap if you know the trick. So there's a flap, a little sticky flap. Go ahead and un unstick the flap and you can just pull the cord out. And again, I'm using two of these. And then on the back of the cord, there's a needle. That's what this little twisted wire bit is. And usually it's tucked up underneath the underneath the cord. So you're gonna go ahead and just pull that needle out. And then I'm gonna unwind the entire card of cord. So I'm just gonna release it from its little um, notches. And then you can just literally grab it and let gravity do the rest. Um, Ace wants to know what makes the tweezers knotting tweezers. And um, the answer to that is really pointy tips and smooth insides um, and it has to be a combination of both of those so so your tweezers don't your knotting tweezers don't necessarily need to look exactly like this where where they're fat and then go skinny um, this is this is a, a sad degraded pair of knotting tweezers that's now become soldering tweezers because um, the ends don't really need anymore but um, you can see that you know both of these shapes are okay totally acceptable for knotting tweezers and some people um, also prefer what's called a bent nose knotting tweezers where basically um, the nose of the tweezers kind of kicks out to the side um, but the, the main thing is you need the really really pointy stabby ends and um, and I know this because at one point I thought that maybe I could use eyebrow tweezers mm -hmm. to knot with but you need no texture on the inside here and most of your really good eyebrow tweezers that are pointy like this have a little bit of kind of um, texturing on the inside here that is not good for knotting. So you need pointy tweezers and they, you need them to be smooth on the inside of your jaws. Now once you have unwound your entire card of silk we are going to give it a quick stretch. Apparently talking about eyebrow tweezers lost me some viewers, go figure. Um, okay, so I'm just going to wrap that between my fingers. I'm going to give it a good pull. What you want after you stretch your silk is you just want to be able to release tension on your silk and have there be no kinks or um, bends remaining in the silk. That is your indicator that you've stretched your silk appropriately. So just three good pulls and I've got one silk that's stretched and I'm going to do the same with my other silks. I'm just going to take my needle. So this is the thing. <laughs> And I don't quite know what the logic is behind that, but but you sometimes your needles just it it's got to do something with the length of the silk and the machine that they use to wind it. But sometimes all of you know your needle is is pushed up under there, like the one I showed you a second ago. Sometimes there's only the end of your needle, and then you actually have to unwind it like so. But either way, just once you've released everything. From its holding notches, just let it drop and unwind the whole thing from the card and then we're going to stretch it. So here's an interesting fact about your Griffin silks. Even though they're all sold as two meter long cards, what they actually mean by that is it is minimum two meters. Um, there's something about the way that they manufacture them that they're not always exactly the same length. Sometimes they're just a hair longer, which if you're looking to knot something that's longer is kind of a bonus, but if you're looking to knot something with two pieces of cord is not super helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two cord needles and I'm just going to line them up like so, and then I'm going to just pull my cord down to the end of its length, trying not to give myself a rope burn. So see, uh, there's a differential of a solid inch 
in my Langston Court and this whole process is going to work a lot better if your needles are even rather than the ends of your cords being even. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to go down here close to the end of my shorter piece of cord and I'm going to tie just a regular overhand knot. Um, if I've got two cords at my number five size, I don't need to worry about um, doing a double knot or a triple knot. This knot is plenty big enough. And that is going to be the beginning of my project. Now I'm going to go all the way to my needles, which are knotted together. Why are you knotted together? Nobody said you could be knotted together. The needles apparently are getting very excited by things that are going on here on the Beading Dream Stream. So I'm going to hold my needles together and I'm going to grab one of my bead tips. So this is a cup hook style bead tip. It's one of the easiest ways to finish any kind of knotted project and what I want is I'm just going to take my two needles and I'm going to insert them up through the cup of my cup hook like so which sounds easier than it is it shouldn't be this difficult. One of my needles has like decided to like bend itself a little foot there, which is really not helpful in any way. That's what I said. Is there, is there some solid chance that I might have my contacts in the wrong eyes? Oh. And now I took my contacts out on Saturday night, and I know I was very, very tired. So when I went to put them in this morning, um, so any of you all who wear contacts, you know that you know you've got the case, and the case usually has a, a curve to it that you know kind of fits into your hand, and then it's got two different color lids, one for right, one for left. So the lids were on the case backwards. So I honestly don't know if I just put my contacts in the case backwards and put the right lids on them, or if I put my contacts in the case correctly and put the wrong lids on them. Possibly I shall just toss these because it's been a solid six weeks for my 30 day contacts and start with another pair tomorrow. That's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. You know, some days I'm smarter than others. So what we want here is this with our bead tip, and what I'm doing is I'm progressing down towards my knot. So once I get to that knot that's at the end of my silks, what I want is I want that knot to wind up resting right inside my bead tip, and then all of this here is going to wind up getting cut off after I glue that knot. So now I'm just going to start with a simple overhand knot that I'm going to position right next to my bead tip. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my bead tip in my right hand. I am a right-handed individual. If you're left-handed, unfortunately, you'll probably want to... Well, hi, Nathan. How are you? How's everything? Um, so if you are left-handed, you're going to need to reverse this. Um, so... <laughs> That's a Heather, you probably heard her. She's finishing up with in-person customers. So uh, she will be on the uh, Heather cam tonight though for the sales stream. So I'm going to do a, <laughs> you shouting at you. Um, so I'm gonna do a basic overhand knot using both of my cords simultaneously. So I'm gonna grab both my cords in my right hand. Again, I'm right-handed if you're left-handed. You're probably going to want to reverse this. I'm just going to wrap it around my um, fingers, go through the loop. Now this is where your tweezers are going to come into play. You're going to follow that cord through the loop. You want to snug your tweezers up right against your bead tip, then take your fingers out and pull. And notice how you, when you pull, you just guide your knot, your tweezers will guide your knot down to the end, and then you're just going to push and push your knot up against your, 
Okay, no, but now I want to know. <laughs> um, but not now because I. Otherwise, we're never gonna get to the sail stream. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I have one knot that's right next to my bead tip, and now I'm going to take my strand of citrine. Now, once again, I'm making a half length lariat on stream tonight. Why? Because it's already 6.38. We have a sail stream in like an hour. So, I'm using one 16 inch strand of citrine beads. You can use up to two 16 inch strands of citrine beads or for that matter any other beads that you want to they don't have to be citrine um, but you can use up to two strands of um, of beads and still successfully knot this piece but again I'm doing a half length one because otherwise we will never get to the sale and Hashtag spoiler alert sales are where we make our money, not the tutorials. So, um, the you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just here to lure you in to the sales streams. Plus, that's where all the really funny shit happens, in case you hadn't noticed. So, I'm gonna take one needle and I'm gonna start stringing. Um, well, we can just make Heather tell the story on the stream tonight. And then she can explain to everybody. <laughs> she she she's giggling and <laughs> and also hating me, I think, a bit right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna string all of my citrine beads onto one needle, one thread. Okay, so there's no need. Is this something Linda can take away with her? Um, sure. Okay. I can't remember why I have it, but yes, Linda may have it. Okay, we'll let you know if it back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need it. But now I want to know why I have it. Shoot. <laughs> me too. Linda broke me. Uh-oh. All right, compartmentalizing is a thing. I String like beads. <laughs> All right, so I'm just stringing all my beads onto one string okay you do not need to alternate strings you can just string them all on one I promise it'll be okay so I'm stringing 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 <laughs> yeah there's just this little purple like carabiner clip thing that that Linda wants and I, I can't remember any reason why I can't give it to her, but I also can't remember why I even have it. So my brain is just trying to, you know, parse information that I think possibly has been overwritten by something else. <laughs> wait, are we, are, wait, are we like starting, are we singing like? <laughs> is this a damn Yankees thing now? Like, what's going on? No, I'm showing Linda. <laughs> <laughs> the parts of not her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've, I'm just having BB Newworth flash work, flashbacks. So, um, any uh, any of my any of my stream audience who are Broadway geeks out there, of course, damn Yankees <laughs> is. A musical about a baseball team and the devil. So my my. If I start singing right now, we're never gonna have a sale. That's fair, because I pretty much know all of the words to all the songs in Damn Yankees, which means I will start singing with you. And then everyone will leave, and our audience will never come back because they will be so scared of my singing. Also, we, we know that Allison is not allowed to go into Harmony Land. <laughs> no! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Where I go, do not follow! <laughs> yes, Allison is firmly in Melody Land, and she can barely stand on her own two feet there. Do not try to go, t do not depart the Melody Land for Harmony Land, because tragedy will ensue. But, um, so my, um, my uncle Gary, who's not actually my uncle, he he was a dear dear friend of my grandmother's, and um, has been you know, kind of as you know an uncle figure, great uncle figure um, to my my mother and myself for most of our lives, 
um, took his mother to see Damn Yankees in New York. And for some reason, he thought this was going to be a musical about the Civil War. and was very shocked <laughs> to find out that it was in fact a musical about baseball and the devil. <laughs> so that that's my damn Yankee story. Um, we did do, we did damn Yankees in high school. I was not in it because um, I, as previously noted, can't sing. Um, I don't even think I was on crew for that one. Does that mean? That may have been when my can mother was... Huh? You can pass in the background. I can pass in the back. Wow, thanks, Heather. I mean, that's all I get to do, too. <laughs> um, I don't even think I was on crew for Damn Yankees, though, because at one point in high school, my mother was putting her foot down about you can't do everything and you can't burn the candle at both ends and, you know, things that seemed very selfish at the time, but actually are sort of valid life lessons. So, um, yeah, but I do, I, I do still remember, um, most of the cast from my high school production of Damn Yankees. Molly Rohde was Lola, J.J. Shabesta was the devil, uh, some guy named, tall guy named Nick, whose last name I can't remember was the, the guy who turns, was the old guy who turns into Shoeless Joe, and then the guy who played Shoeless Joe was Andy, and pretty much the entire female population of the school probably would have jumped him had they been given the opportunity. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to my high school life. <laughs> By the way, let it be noted, I went to an arts high school, so um, for starters, 70% of the school population was female. For seconders, no, I'm good. I'm trying to drink some caffeine. Actually, I could use a little bit more uppers to go with my downers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, of the remaining, for you. of the remaining 30% of the population of my high school, the ones who were male. A solid 15% of them were not interested in in the 70% of us who were female. Just saying. Um, seriously, what though, are you trying to say? I'm trying to say <laughs> that when I was in forensics, our cheer was M H S A. Only half the guys are gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the arts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but seriously though, uh, that high school, wow, that lost me three viewers. Um, <laughs> that high school seriously saved my life because it don't was- Don't believe that. It was the first time, don't believe that the arts school, high school saved my life? No. Or that the, that the cheer I'm lost I'm sure me. they probably just wanted food. <laughs> well, uh, that's fair. Um, but yeah, it, it was really the, hi Amy, the first time in my life that I actually realized that there were a whole lot of people who were as weird as I was. <laughs> and that was amazing to me. So, seriously, one of the best things that ever happened to me was going to the arts high school, even though it meant I didn't have a date until college. So, now that I've got all my beads, Strung on here. I'm going to start my knotting. So, this is how this works. I'm going to take one bead, I'm going to um, pull it down so that it is resting against my first knot. So, I'm always going to pull a bead down and rest it against the knot that is prior to the knot that I'm about to make. Now, you can adjust this. Like if you want more space, you can space your knots out. Um, and that'll give you kind of a cool effect where your beads will sort of like um, slip back and forth between your knots, which is something that Heather really likes to do and looks amazing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to fit your knots tightly to your beads though in this particular project. So I'm gonna take my, my bead and my double threads. I'm gonna do that same overhand knot, so around and through. 
So what I've done is I've taken that bead, I've made my overhand knot, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tweezers, I'm gonna follow down through my knot with my tweezers, and I'm gonna grab, and what I'm gonna do, and this is a little tricky, so what I wanna do is I wanna pinch my two cords right together. It's tricky enough that I can't do it by watching the screen. I actually have to look at the object. There we go, I'm gonna pinch my two cords together at the top of the bead. So you want to make sure that you've got, you know, basically an even, you know, an even amount of cord going through the bead and around the outside. And I'm going to pull and this is where you also have to be careful. So you've got to make sure that you you're pulling evenly since you've got two cords. So if you start getting something like this where you've got all of this just like random rococo bits of cord that are out to the side. You just have to pay, figure out which cord that is, pull it, and then pull both of them. Once you've got it as tight as you can on the tweezers, then take your tweezers out and push. Hi Megan, I did get your message earlier. I scrolled through my phone to try and find the photo that I took and never sent to you, and um, I failed. So I'll try and do that again between streams. Okay, so now we're going to do this again. So we're going to go pull your bead down so that it's resting against the previous knot and again around and through like so. Follow with your tweezers through the knot, grab, so you're holding your two pieces of cord together at the top of the bead, pull and push. All right, so now that's two. So now we're just going to continue this until we've knotted the whole thing. And of course, I am way behind on where I should be as far as ending this tutorial on time. So we're going to try and do this as quickly as possible. We're going to see how that works. It doesn't always work. I always tell students not to hurry because it's going to take them twice as long and this is um, something that much as I pretend I am not subject to the same laws as normal humans, it, it does also oftentimes um, bear itself out for me as well. But we're going to see if I can actually, you know, do this. <laughs> right? Am I changing? No, I'm going to be stubborn and I'm going to try and do my entire strand of citrine beads for my 16-inch um, lariat. Just for, you know, I'm going to see how this goes. Oh! Oh, no, no, stop! I forgot one fairly crucial important step, which is you really, really, really should take the needle that belongs to the thread upon which your beads are strung, and you really, really should tie a slip knot or put a bead stopper up by the needle so that your beads don't just start falling off like mine just did. <coughs> so, you know, live and learn. Do, do you need help? No, I think I only lost like three or four, so we're just going to call those fallen soldiers and, you know, get on with the campaign. <laughs> They're dead cows. <laughs> Sorry, nobody but me can get that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue knotting. So your goal here is just to have, um, a, you know, a fairly non-wonky strand here. One strand of cord going through the bead, one strand going around the outside. So while I am nodding, 
let's go ahead and talk about what's upcoming on the Beating Dream stream. So we do have a live merchandise sale coming up. Um, just judging by where I, am, where I am with this tutorial right now, it's going to be coming up around 7.45 um, right here on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash Beating Dream. I've got all kinds of cool stuff for y'all tonight. I've got individual pieces. I got strands of beads. If I run out of everything, I've got crystals. We've got so much new stuff. So it should be a fun sale. Also, I'm definitely more awake and focused than I was on Saturday. So hopefully we should get through more items as well. Um, do you try to alternate what side the... No, it just... Uh, it just happens. And, and it, it doesn't usually alternate necessarily, like a lot of times it's actually all on the same side. Um, if alternating was super important to you, like if symmetry in, is just paramount to your enjoyment of the project, then what you might want to do is string half of your beads on one chord and half of your beads on the other chord, and then alternate the, the beads from each chord. Um, I am definitely not that married to symmetry, so I'll just put them all on one. And then what you get is you just get this kind of organic of some are on one side, some are on the other side sort of thing. So you can be as precise or as imprecise as you like on this project. But I'm the important thing is, of course, that you get your knots done, and you can see, because of the nature of the project, that your beads aren't going to move once you have them knotted in place, which is, of course, the goal. So yeah, live merchandise sale um, on this stream at 7.45, and then tomorrow is two tutorial Thursdays, so I've got a tutorial for you tomorrow at noon and then I have a torch Thursday tutorial for y'all tomorrow at 6 p.m. Our torch Thursday is the sterling mandala pendant that one involves stamping soldering and dapping so it is and we haven't had one of these in a while it's in every tool in the shed class tomorrow night Thursday night um, this Friday is our zoom crafty cocktail time so we will be on Zoom drinking and doing crafts of your choice. Heather and I will also be here to answer questions about um, any of our projects uh, that you have questions about or any projects that you've been working on that you need a little bit of assistance. So that's this Friday night. Um, and then of course Saturday we're going to have another fun tutorial for you followed by a live merchandise sale. So that is this week on the Beating Dream stream. Also tomorrow is... St. Patrick's Day, we are doing 25% off all green beads in the store tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, so um, I'm happy to extend that to everyone on the stream tonight. So any green beads that I show on the stream tonight will be 25% off as a pre-St. Patrick's Day sale for our stream viewers only. <laughs> I say do it. Okay. Heather's... Heather's sending out the Zoom email on Wednesday instead of Thursday or Friday. That's just nuts. You are. Just as long as you're, we're not living on a prayer anymore. Um. <laughs> so, so yeah, so interesting story from the other day. I... <laughs> I really wanted to hear Living on a Prayer. It was in my head, and I know it's in our playlist. And so I, I'm i like, okay, I'm just going to start the playlist with Living on a Prayer. I'm going to get the, you know, the Bon Jovi out of my head, and then we're just going to, you know, continue on with our day, except somehow. And I still don't know how I did it. I managed to, like, confuse the computer to the point where it just played like the same eight songs all day long. We got to listen to Living on a Prayer I think five times during the day, um, which was a little more Living on a Prayer than I was expecting. And, and you know, it was like Living on a Prayer, U2, and then there was like one random Louis Armstrong or jazz song somewhere in there. I'm not allowed to, no, I'm not. 
I wasn't trying to fix it, to be fair. I was just trying to tell it where to start. Like, I wasn't trying to change it. I wasn't trying to dictate its values. I was just telling it where to begin. And, and that apparently was n not agreeable. So everyone got like a whole lot of Bon Jovi last week. Um, whatever day that was. It was either Wednesday or Friday. <laughs> I, yeah, it, but it wasn't more, Megan, it was like the same 10 songs all day long. Yeah, top 10. Yeah, top 10. Over and over again. I, I just need a Casey Kasem to, you know, do the countdown and then do it again and then do it again and again and again. Yeah, I'm not allowed to touch the music anymore. It's a delicate system. Well, I did. I, mm, I didn't mean to. I mean, I've done it too. It's, it's a really delicate. <laughs> Look, it's a seventeen-year-old computer. Okay, that's fair. That's like. It's a dinosaur. It's a it's it's a it's a grouchy T-Rex of a computer, <laughs> is what Heather's saying. And and I, and I touched it, and now it's it hates me forever. So I'm just continuing to not. <laughs> well, that's good. Maybe the computer just wanted some Bon Jovi time. You don't know. Maybe I just gave it an excuse. Eek. Wow, somebody's got some bass going on out there. They are not playing Bon Jovi. So I'm continuing to not. I'm um, more than halfway there. So as far as knotting goes, the the stringing on your beads first and then knotting them is absolutely the most efficient way to do it. the The problem is, and the reason that most instructors don't initially teach knotting like this, myself included, is because it is really easy to just make a giant mess of things. And so, um, it, it's nice to only start using the technique that can make the giant mess when you already know how to get out of it. It can be very frustrating and confusing if you, if you're not you know, grounded in an appreciation and, and a skill of the technique when all of a sudden everything's like tangled 17 different ways and you have no idea how to extricate yourself from the problem that you have created. Ah! Lori, that's so nice. She's like, I'm really freaking hungry. Okay, we really, y'all need to work on this whole, like, food delivery through the internet system because I definitely want, you know, some of Lori's food. No, Heather would not like the homemade her pulled pork. It's true. It's, it's too porky for her, but that's okay. I will eat all of Heather's share of the pulled pork and my share... And I, I'm not going to say I'm going to fight your sons for their share because I think they're both, or all of them, are, are like two or three times my size. But, um, uh, well, I, th I don't know that there are any shares left. Okay. Also, I will, if there are, I'll fight you for them. Uh, Lori's never seen me eat pulled pork. <laughs> But, but there's there's a special compartment in my stomach for smoked meats. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's fair. I can't. <laughs> I, I really think I dreamed about brisket last night. I believe you. Because who doesn't dream about brisket unless you're Heather? Why did I dream about brisket, though? I mean, I... 
<laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm 99. It's true. Right, by the way, yeah, hey y'all, I have no internet at my house right now. Um, so, long story sort of shorter, um, had to get my internet switched over from my boyfriend's name to mine, which one wouldn't think would be difficult. But apparently, like au, contraire. au contraire, apparently without a death certificate, I can't change the name on the account, so basically what they had to do is just start a new account in my name, a service at my address, and just basically his account's just going to go into, you know, default for non-payment. Okay, fine, whatever. So they had to, in order to do this, ship me a new modem. They can't just do some like boop boop beep boop boop computer magic and change the account with the modem I already have. Oh no, must must have completely new equipment. They have shipped it now to the wrong address twice. Not once but twice. Yeah, Megan, his family's not interested in, in listening to anything I have to say. Um but yeah, so they, they shipped the modem to the wrong address twice, AT&T. Um, and they hung up on you how many times? They hung up on me three times this morning, or, or I got disconnected. Um, I, the first time I called, they told me that all of this their system worldwide was down. Um, so yeah, so my service was... The old service was scheduled to terminate at midnight um, this morning, which it did. Yeah, well, you know what, Megan? Can I tell you how little I care? <clears throat> Just because they've been nothing but nasty. So anyway, um... So yeah, so this so the old service terminated at midnight this morning, uh, and the new service started at midnight this morning, which is great, except for the fact that I didn't have the equipment, so um, now I have no internet at home, which sucks, because I've been watching Star Trek Discovery. I mean, I can watch it on my phone. You can come to my house and, and watch it on my iPad with me. I well, I mean, to be fair, I could probably watch it on my iPad. I could also watch it on my computer. But I also have a television that's bigger I mean, I, than all of those things. And, by the way, I'm currently paying for internet that I don't even have. Because they started correct. billing me today. Um, AT it's AT&T, Megan, yeah. And you get Rita on their case. <laughs> right? They're going to be in trouble. I know, but you know, Rita doesn't work and she's like, I don't do tech support. That's not my thing. I do implementation of big picture programs. I do not think that that involves fixing Allison's internet. AT&T totally sucks in every sense except for the fact that they have the best internet available here in Dallas. But the rest of everything that they do absolutely sucks. Well, Spectrum is, but Spectrum here, way slower than AT&T. Like, AT&T has the fiber, and um, it has all of the speed and all of the bandwidth. Spectrum is, Spectrum is what we have here at Beating Dreams, um, and it is definitely suffers by comparison. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have knotted this whole 16 inches, so now it's time to put the end on and then put my little, and by little I mean giant pearl accent beads on. So, first I'm going to undo the knot that I made. Really, whatever, whatever internet will let me, like, get some of Lori's pulled pork 
through my computer. That that's the that's the internet. But I I will be a customer for life. Okay, so now I'm going to take my second uh, bead tip, and I want to put my needles through. So this time I'm going through the opposite way. So I'm going from the bottom of the cup up towards the hook, and that's because I'm going to now make the knot that's going to sit inside that little cup. So I'm just going to pull everything down. I knew that I saw a knot in there, and then I looked at it again, and I was like, no, there's no knot in there. It's totally not my thread. Excuse me while I unknot my thread. Um, but anyway, yeah, so those were my woes, and, and the way I found this out, I mean, obviously I had talked to customer service, so I knew what was going to happen, but then I forgot about it, because it's me. So I woke up this morning at, like, 4.30 or 5, and I was like, okay, fine, I'm awake, I might as well, like go do some work and so I go to the office to turn on the television so I can watch something like Star Trek while I'm doing my work and it's like we're sorry your Roku has no internet connection and then I was like well crap Did you at that uh, well it did in my head yes okay. <clears throat> I'm like oh I'm pretty sure I know exactly why my Roku has no internet connection, and of course, um, AT&T customer service doesn't open until 7 a.m. And, yeah, anyway. Hashtag and rant, I know. Wah, wah, I don't have internet Wi-Fi in my house. I only have internet on my phone and my tablet and my computer and nowhere else, and that's such a first world problem. But still, I'm paying for the internet I don't have. Alright, so now that I've got my bead tip on, I'm going to tie a knot that's going to go right inside. <laughs> wow, yes, that was quite the rant. <laughs> I mean, if I need to take a break on stream tonight, though, I, I will make you reenact it, because that was, that was something. <laughs> First thing when I got in. <laughs> She was not okay. Okay, so I'm <laughs> I'm gonna tie a knot. So I'm just gonna tie um, a knot where I'm gonna go through with one thread five times. I I'll let I'll let Heather reenact her rant for you when we get on the sale stream because that that was very intense. <laughs> No, I don't think so. But I also have to talk about Mary Louise. Okay, so Heather's got a lot of stories to tell. I have a lot of stories. Well, good. Alright, so we're going to pull that nice and tight, and then I'm going to tie one more knot, just a regular single knot. Alright, and that's going to finish that off, and I'm going to take my hypo cement. If you don't have hypo cement, clear nail polish is an acceptable substitute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hypo cement and I'm going to put it onto my knot. And you just want to make sure that you, you get it all over your knot. You're going to do that with both of your knots. And then we just want to give that a couple minutes to dry, during which we will make our accent pendulums. So that's going to be our head pins. And I want to make sure I've got all three of my pliers close to hand. So I'm going to put my pearl onto my head pin. And then I'm going to make, anyone want to guess? I bet y'all can guess. I bet somebody has guessed right in the lag time. I'm going to make a basic wire wrap loop. So that means I'm going to go away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate underneath. That's going to make my... I hope I don't screw it up. Alright, that's going to make my lady with the scarf. 
And since my bead tip opens, I don't need to worry about attaching this, so I'm just going to go ahead and then wrap it closed. So I'm going to start at the base of my loop and just wrap down until I get to my bead and then trim that end off. And press it down. And ideally, when we press it down, we want that pointy stabby bit. There we go, to just curve in with the rest of our coils. One more time. Head pin goes up through the bead, round nose pliers touching the top of the bead. We go away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate underneath. That's, again, Our Lady with the Scarf. Fold across and wrap. When you're wrapping you want to try and keep your wraps nice and close to your core wire and nice and close to each other. Trim. Press down your pointy stabby and come back here. Alright, like so. Sometimes you get curls that are drilled wonky like this. Um, it's really up to you whether you want to actually wrap all the way down to the hole or whether you just want to wrap, you know, to what's visually the top of the pearl. I tend to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes I do one, sometimes I do the other. It's just about what looks better. All right, now I've got my knotted section. And it's time to get rid of all of my ends. Any sharp oh we do have sharp scissors Aha. yeah sharp scissors so what I want to do with this is I want to cut all of these ends as close as possible to the knot that I've glued without actually cutting into the knot so I want like a minimum of sort of fuzzy tails um, sticking out not that I normally have a problem with fuzzy tails but I don't really like them on my knotted pieces so we're gonna trim that off Though there is totally a picture of Mamie on our Instagram because I was showing a friend, or not a friend, I was showing a client, um, how to do Instagram. And I was like, well, here's a picture of my cat, now I'm going to post it. So if anyone was wondering why there was a picture of Mamie randomly on our Insta, that's why. Because I was teaching. She was a visual aid. Alright, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup hook bead tip and cup hook is called such because it has a hook there I know logical right I'm gonna put my pendant piece on there and then all I'm gonna do is take my chain nose pliers I want to put one jaw my chain nose under that cup and one on top of the hook and I'm just gonna gently squeeze and what you want is you want that hook like so to go right down in that cup so you make like a little basket. And I'm going to repeat on the other side. <coughs> Excuse me, sometimes you've got to sort of manipulate around your knot. Ideally, you want your knot to be kind of enclosed in the, the space that's delineated by that hook. All right, and there we go. We're just going to close. Well, Megan, let's let's don't ask Heather about that, okay? No, see, that's the way I want it. Well, right, but that's well, not I also have nice liners, so <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so there we go. So that's our second, sorry, I needed some focus, focal distance that was not where my camera is, but there's my second pendant on my bead tip. Again, make sure 
you've glued your knots thoroughly before you trim them, it is um, important because when you're trimming your knots so close, <laughs> I tally fit. When you're when you're trimming your knots so close, you need to make sure that they are glued. So that is your boho knotted lariat. This, of course, is a mini one. It does just barely go around my neck. Um, I definitely am more of a fan of the double length one, but this is, you know, this is a fun, fun layering piece. Um, the cool thing about, ahem, the cool thing about the double length one is you can either wear it long and flip it over like I just did, or you can also wear it like a scarf where you'll double it and then put it around your neck and drop the two pieces through. Like so. So, um, again, I highly recommend the double length one, which should be two 16 inch strands of beads, but considering I ran 20 minutes over doing the single length one, double length was not in the cards for tonight. But that is our Boho Knotted Lariat. By the way, Boho Knotting is a class that I totally stole from Heather. This is 100% her design that I have co-opted to teach on the internet. So... That's our Boho Knotted Lariat for this evening. So I'm Allison from Beading Dreams in Dallas, Texas. And um, we are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. We are here on Lover's Lane um, in Dallas. And we are here to feed your need to bead um, six days a week. <laughs> Yay, Tally Fett. You're so sweet. Um, we're here Monday through Saturday, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream five times a week with complimentary tutorials. We stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time because we are here in Dallas, Texas, plus Thursdays at noon with complimentary tutorials. And we have live merchandise sales every Wednesday and every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Except for today, it's going to be closer to 7.45 p.m. You know why? Because I ran over with my tutorials. So, um, I do have lots of cool stuff for y'all tonight, including Tally Fed. I have gemstone hearts and other cool stuff. So we've got individual beads, we've got strands of beads, um, and we got fun, fun things for y'all tonight. So it's time for me to get offline, eat some food, get ready for the sale, and I will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream with a Heather. Um, in just about half an hour. So everyone have a great 30 minutes. Don't forget to get yourself a cocktail, get a snack, get some hydration, get comfy, get cozy, and get ready for some retail therapy in the comfort of your living room, office, or from wherever you are watching the Beating Dream stream. So we will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in about half an hour. Bye!
Are you a gamer? Then game like a gagillionaire. A gagillionaire games at the highest level with AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds. The speed exhilarating. The power intoxicating. The under 18 millisecond ping rate zombie annihilating. Live like a gagillionaire. Get AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. Now with hyper gig speeds. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Speeds vary, not guaranteed. Other factors may impact on game lag. In a world where aliens hunt down humans, two commandos must hide to survive without their old spice. Shh, quiet. Quiet. Oh, man, you stink. Didn't you use new Old Spice dry spray with long-lasting freshness? Quiet, they'll hear us. No, I can't. You stink. I told you I forgot my old spice. Thank you. 